This video will be going over section 9.5, which is uh, introduction on matrices. Uh, we'll start with just uh, introduction to a matrix, what it is, and a couple things about it. Then we'll see how matrices correspond to linear equations, systems of linear equations, something called an augmented matrix. And then we'll look at what being a simplified matrix means and how to read it to get our solutions to a system of linear equations. And then the last thing, what actually happens when you simplify the matrix, something called elementary row operations. And I'll just go ahead and preview that and say what we do in this little part, the elementary row operations corresponds to the things that we do elimination method with. But you will have some notation to learn in here and you also will need to know how to use real operations. All right, but we'll get started. Just a brief introduction on matrices. Uh, the definition of a matrix is kind of obscure. That's why I didn't really highlight it, highlight it very well because really a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. An array just really means kind of like a list that's organized and it's organized in a rectangle but these are examples of matrices uh, the more important thing about this definition which is what i really want to highlight here is that if the if a matrix a has m rows and n columns we say it is an m by n matrix Right, so that sounds pretty familiar. We've been talking about two by two and three by three systems of equations. Matrices are similar. Um, the number that comes in front is the number of rows and the number that comes second is the number of columns, M by N, rows, columns. Right, so I just have a few examples of what a matrix looks like. I said it's basically a rectangular array of numbers, meaning it's some numbers that are kind of organized in an array um, in a rectangle and we put these brackets around the outside to really encompass it so we, if you kind of think about filling this out we get a rectangle and this matrix a here is a two by three matrix rows are left to right so there are two rows here this would be row one and this would be row two Columns are read up and down vertically. So we have three columns in this matrix. And we do that left to right. One, two, three. So if we have to refer to a column, column one is the left one, and then the number goes up as we move right. Row one is the top one, and the number goes up as we move down. But it is a two by three matrix because there are two rows and three columns. Matrix B here has three rows and two columns, so it is a three by two matrix. And we have three rows and we have two columns. It is a three by two matrix. And the last one we have is a two by two matrix, matrix C down here. There are two rows and two columns. All right, so big thing to take away from here. Well, you kind of see what a matrix looks like. This is just what you want to think of a matrix as. Uh, but important, the row number comes before the column number. I do have a little extra comment here because this is what we deal with most of the time when it comes to matrices, especially after this section, is we'll see matrices with the same number of rows and columns, and those are called square matrices. It's not something you have to memorize at all. The only reason I'm bringing it up is I might say square matrix in these videos as we go through some problems. All I'm saying is a matrix with the same number of rows and columns. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is relating a system of linear equations 
to a matrix. It's called an augmented matrix. This procedure is kind of, it's pretty straightforward to do, um, but it's harder to describe. So that's why I don't have any real um, notes here beforehand. Uh, but what we want to do for the following system of equations, write down the corresponding augmented matrix. So we start by writing a matrix. And there are two ways to think about doing an augmented matrix. I'm going to do one way and then I'll show you you can read it off the other way. What you do is each column is going to correspond to a variable. So I'm going to have an X column because I have X's here. I'm going to have a Y column because I have Y's here. Since I don't have any Z's here, I'm not going to make a Z column. But I do have the stuff on the right of the equal sign. So what I like to do is I like to put a bar. This isn't something you actually put in a matrix. It's just for convenience of reading it. Um, this is like an equal sign bar. But once again, it's not really in a matrix. When we use our calculator, um, equal sign bar, not equal sign matrix. Um, you don't actually write this in, but it's very helpful to know you're separating this from this. Right, and what goes on this side is the numbers. All right, so we just kind of fill it out. We put the coefficients in each column in the order they appear. All right, you're not going to put any numbers inside a matrix. I'm sorry, not any letters inside a matrix, only numbers. That's it. So the X column, we got two in the first spot, in the first one. And if we move down, our coefficient is negative one. In the Y column, we have one in the first uh, equation and four in the second equation. And, and across the equal sign, the numbers, you just list the numbers off in order. The first number is one, the second number is four. Right, but once again, you're putting only numbers in here. Don't put the variables in here. Do not put any plus or minus signs. Only the numbers. All right, but this would be considered it's the augmented matrix. And this would be our answer. All right, you would have a two by three matrix here. You'll notice that we have a two by two system, what we were talking about before. The reason it's two by three as far as the matrix goes is because of this extra column here. All right, but the other thing I wanted to mention is you can also think about filling this out as rows. The way we would really read this first row is we have two X plus one Y equals one. In the second row, negative one X plus four Y equals four. All right, so you can read it off either way. I far prefer the column way because when you're missing some letters here, you don't want to forget that and just leave it blank or miss it, mess it up. What's going to go there is zeros, which we will see in the next problem. And so I much prefer the column way, and I'm going to do all of them like that. All right, second one here. Same directions, we just have a system of three equations with three unknowns. We got two X plus Y plus Z equals one, negative X plus four Y equals four, and three Z equals 16. You're not doing anything to solve this stuff. You know, don't worry about that. We're just filling out what it's asking us. And we're gonna, I'm gonna just go in order of the alphabet the way it's written. We have X column, We'll have a Y column, we'll have a Z column, we'll have our equal sign, and then we'll have our numbers. And you fill it out exactly the same way, but just be careful on this one. So the X column, we have a two on top, and then a negative one next. The last equation does not have an X in it. You don't leave it blank. You put a zero. Because right, it's like having zero X. Then we move over to the Y column. 
the first equation has 1y, the second equation has 4y, the third equation doesn't have a y either, so that's 0y. Then we move over to the z column. The first equation has 1z. The second equation has 0z. There's no z there. And the third equation has 3z. Equal bar. And then we put our numbers. We got 1 and then 4 and then 16. Okay, so this would be our augmented matrix for this one. Yeah, one of the things we're going to see in the next section is kind of the form a matrix looks like when it's simplified. And zeros are a really big deal because what zeros mean is you're eliminating the variable. Uh, so one way I can think about it, in equation 3, which is corresponding to row 3 here, x and y are eliminated and they get zeros because they're not really there. In the second equation, there's no z in the equation. z is eliminated, and it has a zero there. So what we're going to see is when you simplify a matrix, it all relates to getting zeros in the correct spots. Okay, but this is the answer. I'm just going to write in what I said before. Zeros, you do not want to forget about them. They are where the missing letters are in our equations. Any missing letters, like having a zero times a letter. And so make sure you put those zeros in. If you leave them blank, that is wrong. It has to be a zero. All right, so that would really be the first of the three steps to solving a system of equations with a matrix is the first step would be make an augmented matrix. The next step is going to be the long one, and I'm actually doing that one last. Um, the last step is if you have a reduced matrix, what is it telling you? Because your calculator can do the middle part. It can't make the matrix for you. It can't make you read off the matrix, you have to do that yourself, but it can simplify it. It cannot do what we did here. It cannot tell you what the answers are. You have to understand what the answers are. And the reduced form of a matrix is called echelon form. That's kind of almost simplified. And reduced echelon form is a fully simplified form. So we're mainly going to use this one. Um, on your calculator in most places they represent reduced echelon form RREF. Uh, the extra R is like standing for row, it reduced row echelon form. But the way our book works it doesn't use the extra row part. Echelon form is also something that's in your calculator in most calculators and that's REF. But it's it's kind of like half simplified. It's like saying if you solve this equation and then you get 3 over 6, well, it's not wrong. It's just not fully simplified. You need one half. So this is like almost uh, almost simplified version of it. All right, but this is the preferred thing, and your calculator can do this one just as easily as this one, which means we're going to really focus on this. Right, but I want to list off the definition of echelon form and then how it builds into a reduced echelon form. I do recommend you writing these down. That's why I have them highlighted because you will be tested on that. Right, so we say a matrix is an echelon form if it meets the following criteria. The first non-zero entry in each row is a one and it's called the leading one. Right. I'll, I'll have plenty of examples, but what I mean just to go back to the ones we just did. I'm going to scroll up for a second. The first non-zero entry in a row is 1. 
Okay, so if you think about reading from left to right, the first thing that you run into left to right must be a one when it's not zero. So this would need to be a one here. This would also need to be a one here. In the third row here, these are zeros, so that's fine. When we run into our first thing is not a zero, which is this three here, this needs to also be a one. Okay, so this one's definitely not an echelon form but that's what being a leading one means. All right. Everything is pretty much based on the leading ones for echelon form. So once you have leading ones in every row, what you look for is that each entry below a leading one is a zero. All right. So when you have your leading one here, let's pretend this was a leading one, then everything below it would be a zero. And if, if this was a leading one, everything below it would need to be a zero, and this would not work because it's not zero. So you'd have to make zeros. That's the simplifying part. Uh, when you do this, when your calculator does it, and when you see examples, you're going to see a lot of zeros. But once again, we'll have to f understand how do we make zeros, how does our calculator make zeros, and we do that in the last section. That's our row operations. The third one, it says the leading ones must move to the right as you move down the rows. This one just really makes it organized. Uh, so it, it, it looks a certain way. Right, so once again, we'll see examples, but if I had a leading one here, and when I move my down a row, the next, the leading one in this row must be to the right. So it could be here or here or here, but it must be to the right. And then if I have a leading one here, I move down the next row, the leading one must be to the right of that. So it's sort of like the leading ones, as they fall down, they're rolling to the right. And the last thing is if you have a row of all zeros, it goes at the bottom. All right, and this one, is just the is one of the easier things to remember. You won't often see a row of all zeros, but if you do, you just put it. You can just move it to the bottom. Okay. And the last thing that's echelon form to be reduced echelon form. It really builds on the second step up here. So in echelon form, we needed everything below a leading one to be a zero. In reduced echelon form, we also need every entry above a leading one to be a zero. Okay, so you kind of a way to think about this is in a column with a leading one, the rest of the entries must be zero. Everything above and below it must be zero. All right, but we'll go ahead and look at a few examples. I got six here. Should be plenty of examples, but sometimes there are a couple of things you have to be careful about. All right, so for the following matrices, state whether each is in reduced echelon form or not. If it is not, state which rule it breaks. Okay, so we want it simplified, which means we want any, any column with a leading one to have only zeros, otherwise. We need the leading ones to move to the right as we move down. And any row of all zeros must be at the bottom. All right, so really the way to do this is start by circling your leading ones. This is what I like to do because everything revolves around them. All right, so in this first one here, the first thing as we move left to right is our leading one. In the first row, it's this one. In the second row, it is this one. And the third row, it is this one. I said circle, I boxed them in, whatever. J 
just point them out. You can only have one per row, so there's not any more. The question is, does it follow all the rules? Does it move down as we go right? And the answer is yes. Right, as we move down the row, the leading one moves to the right. As we move down the row, the leading one moves to the right. Do we have zeros above and below all the leading ones? Well, if you have this box in, you can see it pretty clearly. Below this leading one, we have zeros. Below this leading one, we have zero. Above this leading one, we have a zero. And above the leading one here, we also have a zero. So that is also a yes. What's going on in this column doesn't matter because there's not a leading one in this column. Okay. So these can all be zero. None of these are zero, and that doesn't matter. That doesn't affect it. So we, we move right and down, the zeros are above and below. And the last question relates to, do we have any zero rows, any rows with all zeros? Well, there's no row with all zeros. But if there was, it would need to be at the bottom if there was. But these are the three questions we want to answer. Are we moving right and down? Yes. Are there zeros above and below? Yes. Are there any zero rows? And if there are, are they at the bottom? I guess that you could say that's a yes because there aren't any to check. Okay, so this first one here is yes, it is in reduced row echelon form, which I'm going to use RREF. Right, but it's all based on that. Start with circling or pointing out your leading ones, and then go from there. Right, so number two, first row, the leading one is right here. Second row, the leading one is right here. Third row, the leading one is right here. Right, and you can run through this list of stuff pretty quickly in your head. I have them written here. Are we moving right and down? Yes, that one's good. Okay, do we have zeros above and below all of them? And you'll see that one is a no. All right, we have zeros here, which is good, below this one. We have zeros above and below this one, which is good. What's going on here doesn't matter because there's not a leading one in this column. So that wouldn't be a problem. But in this column, this six is not a zero. We have to make it a zero. It's not in reduced row echelon form otherwise. So that makes it a no. As soon as you break one of the rules, you're done. It's not in reduced row echelon form. You could say it's in row echelon form because it's only breaking the above part, but there's not really a reason to care about each one of those. All right, so moving on to the next one, number three. I guess I should act, even though I wrote it, let's just go ahead and put no. All right, number three, look at our leading ones. And you might already see a problem here, right? This is our first non-zero entry in row one, but it is not a one. If it's not a one, then you're, you can't be in reduced row echelon form. So not a, not a leading one, which means it's not in reduced row echelon form. You don't have to check anything else. It is not in reduced row echelon form. I'll just put no there. All right, the zero row, I, I, this, I think this is the only example with the zero row, but it is at the bottom. So if this was a leading one, this, uh, this would be okay. The zero row is at the bottom. All right, number four. 
same thing, but the leading ones. So row one, we have a leading one here. It's the first one moving from left to right, that is not zero. The second row, first one moving left to right is this one. And the third row, first one moving left to right is this one. And what you can tell right away, they are all leading ones, which is good, but they're not moving right as we move down. All right, and even though ultimately when you get to your answer, this would be okay, it's not what we call organized enough. You want the matrices all to be organized in a specific way. So that's why this one's not in reduced row echelon form. As we move down the rows, the first one is good, but the second one, when we move down, the leading one's to the left. Okay, so this one's not in reduced row echelon form. Okay, number five, continue. Leading one here in row one, leading one here in row two, leading one here in row three. Is there, are we moving right and down? Okay, there are all ones. And that is a yes, they're definitely moving right and down. Do we have zeros above and below? And that is also a yes. Below this one's good, below this one's good, above this one's good, and above this one is good. Oops. And then the last question it relates to the whole zero row th thing. Um, there is no zero row. So that's automatically checked off. That means this one works at all three spots. This is in reduced row echelon form. All right, and finally, the last one here, look at the leading ones. We got one right here. Row two, we got it right here. Row three, we got it right here. And this one, there's multiple reasons why this one is not in reduced row echelon form. The first one, if you go in the order we were doing, right and down, that answer is no. As we move down the rows, we don't always move to the right. You have to move to the right. And that doesn't happen because we're moving straight down here, not going to the right. Okay, so this last one here is not in RREF as well. Okay, but as we'll see in the next section, next little bit, if you're in reduced row echelon form, it's very, very, very easy to read off your solutions. That's the point. Right, if each of these rows was an equation from a system of equations, which we'll see, we can read them off and know what it says. All right, so I'll go ahead and say right now that the uh, directions on these problems almost make it look a little intimidating, but and with all the stuff you're given, but it's pretty straightforward if you read it correctly. Okay. Don't make these kinds of questions on the homework harder than they need to be. Right, so we're looking at a few systems of equations on, on all these problems. We have four of them on the left. And on the right is their reduced row echelon form matrix. Okay, so here's the system. And here's the matrix in RREF. It's the augmented matrix. You can see the vertical bar. I drew those in. Those don't have to be there. Let me put the word augmented. And what we want to do here for each of these problems, write what each row states as an equation. So what it wants you to do is take your augmented matrix, write what each row states as an equation to determine whether the corresponding system has zero, one, or infinitely many solutions. If there is one solution, write it as an ordered triple. If there are infinitely many solutions, write them and 
If there are infinitely many solutions, write them in terms of their parameter and give two solutions. That's, this isn't something we've done yet because without matrices it's really hard. When you do a system of equations with infinitely many solutions, without a matrix, it's really scattered. Matrices keep you organized. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to do exactly this. I'm going to take my augmented matrix and read off each row. One thing I do want to really encourage here is you can't just, on these problems, write X, Y, Z because you have to look at the letters used. This first column is the B column because that's what comes first. The second column is the Y column. And the third column is the A column. It's going to be in order of how it's written over here. All right, so the first row says 1B or just B equals 2. All these zeros mean we'd have 1B plus 0Y plus 0Z. So we just have B equals 2. The second row says 0B plus 1Y or just Y plus 0A equals negative 4. And the last row says 0B plus 0Y plus 1A or just A equals 6. But you want to take the knowledge that we talked about in the first two sections here. If you get a number for every one of your variables, this is telling you there is one solution. And this is it. All right, if you get a number for each variable, there is one solution. And the solution, you have to write it in the order it's given to you, B comma Y comma A equals 2 comma negative 4 comma 6. Okay, so this is the solution. This is what you would type in. Just read the question carefully how it wants it written. But if it wants an ordered triple, make sure you do the um, the order correctly. Don't just do an alphabetical order. Don't write X, Y, Z if that's not actually your letters. Okay, the number two. Number two, we have this system of equations over here. The variables are in D and Y in that order. I'm going to go ahead and write that in because I just like to keep track of it. And when we reduce our matrix, it will become this. Once again, we will get to the how to reduce next, but it's very, very important to be able to read off your matrix, probably more important if you're going to pick one or the other, but you should learn both. Right, so we want to go ahead and do the same thing. Write out each row, what it says, and see what happens. Right, the first row says 1N, or just N, plus 0D, plus 7Y, equals 0. And remember, this is the number. Right, the second row says 0N, plus 1D, or D, plus 3Y, equals zero and the last row says zero in plus zero d plus zero y notice on this side of the equal sign we have all zeros so you can't just leave it blank you got to write zero equals one and if you look at our equations now what you should realize is what is happening in row three is the most important. This is telling you there are no solutions. Right, so I want you to remember once again from last section. You have to really remember what we did there. If we get a number for each, we have one solution. If we get a contradiction like this, zero equals one is what's going to happen in RREF. That's kind of a nice thing you get no solutions and we zero equals zero but we'll see with the next one you have to be careful is infinitely many solutions All right so let's just continue 
doing the same thing. It's good practice though. Uh, number three here, the letters are X, Y, and Z in that order. Go ahead and fill that in. And our rows, let's read them off. The first row says X plus 4Y plus 3Z equals 0. The second row says 0X plus 0Y plus 0Z. Zero so zeros on the left side of the equal sign equals 1. And in the third row, we have all zeros. 0 on the left equals 0 on the right. All right this is where it becomes really important that you re remember what I told you last time. It's very possible with it, three equations that you get something that looks like no solutions and something that looks like infinitely many solutions. But no solutions always overrides it. Okay, this is no solutions. And what this is ultimately saying is there, even though we have infinitely many solutions, it overrides it. All right, so zero equals zero. We know that's what infinitely many looks like, but no solutions overrides it. So the answer to this one is, in fact, no solutions. I'll write it more suggestively over here to avoid confusion. So there are no solutions to this thing. The last one that I have here, same, same directions. Um, read off the matrix, see what it tells you. Our first letter is B, the second one is C, and the third one is Y. Read off each equation. The first row says 1B plus 2Y equals 6, or just B plus 2Y equals 6. The second row says Z plus 3Y equals 5. And the third row says 0 equals 0. Right. Now because this is in RREF, because it is simplified and you do not have any no solutions in this one, 0 equals 0 does mean infinitely many solutions. There are infinitely many solutions to this one. Now I'm going to scroll back up to the directions because there was some added things when you had infinitely many solutions, what you wanted to do. Right. If there are infinitely many solutions, write them in terms of their parameter and give two solutions. Okay, so what the parameter is, the parameter is the letter that pops up in both solutions, equations, which is y. Okay. So what it means is you can figure out a b and z variable if you plug in y. It's pretty much always going to be the last one, whatever your order is, because of the way matrices reduce. So the parameter appears in both equations. What it means by rewrite them in terms of your parameter is just solve for b, solve for z. Subtract the 2y and the 3y, respectively. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. We rewrite in terms of the parameter y. So our first equation, we get b equals negative 2y plus 6. And the second equation, if we subtract the 3y, we get z equals negative 3y plus 5. And I can't remember if they like the third thing, but if you have the parameter, if you have to fill out a third equation, it's just y equals y. <laughs> 
it's a meaningless statement, but um, if you need that third line. Uh, just off the top of my head, I cannot remember exactly what the homework works once when it comes to the parameter. I know it likes it written like this. I just can't remember if you need that third equation. Okay. All right. So that's rewritten in terms of your parameter y. And giving two solutions, all you have to do here is plug in two different y values, parameter values, and get their ordered triple. And because you solved it like this, it's easy to get the B and Z values. Right, you can plug in any two different numbers for Y you want. All right, but I'm choosing Y because it's the parameter. If my parameter was Z, I'd choose C. All right, so if I plug in Y equals zero, we get b equals 6. Right? If we plug in 0 for y here, we get b equals 6. And if we plug in 0 for y, we get z equals 5. Okay, so that comes from here, plugging in z, y equals 0 there, and y equals 0 there. And then you just plug in any other number and do the same thing. Plug in any other number to both equations. Let's say y equals 1. If we plug in y equals 1 here, we get b equals negative 2 plus 6, which is negative 4. And we get z equals negative 3 plus 5, which is negative 2. All right, but we got our two solutions here. If you want them written as ordered triples, you have to remember the order is B, C, Y that we were given. Okay, so B is 6, Z is 5, Y is 0. And here B is negative 4, Z is negative 2, and Y is 1. All right, so definitely a lot more work to do these problems when you have infinitely many solutions, all the problems ask you to do one or the other, either rewrite in terms of the parameter or give two solutions. But these are just two of the infinitely many. You can plug in any y value you want. If you wanted to, you could even go as far as checking your answers, but that's not a necessary step. Alright, so the last thing we want to do here in this section is talk about row operations. Right, row operations are basically what your calculator does to reduce the matrix and it is one thing you will be tested on. Now you won't have to do the full blown thing. You won't have to take this matrix get reduced all the way by hand. Now, I'll tell you right now, that would probably take at least 100 pluses, minuses, multiplications, divisions. And if you make one error, especially if it's at the beginning, you just get totally lost and um, your answers are way off, even if it's as minor as saying 2 plus 1 is 4. All right, so to get a matrix into reduced echelon form, you prefer what are called elementary row operations. These row operations correspond exactly with how we did the elimination method. The benefit is that it will keep track of everything. All right, so what I want to do is, these are the three row operations. I want to describe why they're pretty much the same as what we did with elimination. All right, the thing to remember is every row is pretty much an equation. If I just look down here at this example to explain what I'm talking about, 
this question would, or this matrix would read in the first row, 6x plus 3y minus c equals 2. Okay, so at each row in a matrix is, is like a, an equation, a linear equation. Right, so remember what we did with elimination was we tr uh, multiplied rows or divided rows, that's just multiplication by a fraction, by a number. All right, so this first one, multiply a row by a non-zero number. You cannot multiply a row by zero. It makes your answers wrong. This is the same as multiplying an equation by a number. Uh, adding a row to another row is pretty much the only one we really did. Uh, adding a row to another row was just when we actually did the elimination thing. So if we had to multiply an equation by 2 and then add them to eliminate, this is the second part of that. So adding an equation to another to eliminate. All right, this last one isn't one that we really did, but it's it's it makes some problems easier. You can interchange or switch two rows. The reason you might want to do that is if you remember our RREF, pretty much every example had a one here. All right, we needed a leading one and we wanted zeros below it. If you already have a zero, let's say you have a zero here, you could switch the two rows around to get a zero where you need it to be. That just me means you're rewriting the order of the equations, which doesn't change your answers at all. Okay, so to explain more specifically, if we were talking about solving this one and we were doing everything in our calculator, well, if I had this third equation as the second and the second as the third, it's still the same system of equations, I still get the same answer. All right, but what we're gonna do is just practice with the notation of what's going on, what something like this says, doing the row operations. And then we'll have one example where we'll pose the question, what row operation should I do to get an RREF? So the, the, these first three here, I'm just going to establish all three row operations and how you do them and how you write them. You do need to know how to read something like this. All right, so we want to perform the given row operation. This is the row operation on the given matrix. Right, we want to perform this given row operation and write the resulting matrix. All right, so all these R's stand for rows. R3 means row 3. R2 would mean row 2. And R1 means row 1. All right, so it's just shorthanded. Now what this first one is saying, the left side is what we're doing. The left side says if we take row 3 and multiply it by 3, we want to multiply row 3 by 3. Okay, so we take row 3 and we multiply it by 3. We don't have that multiplication in there, but we could put it. That's what the left side is. This arrow is telling you what to do, which it is telling you to, is what to do on the right side. All right, this arrow with R3 is telling you, make it, make it the new row three. OK, 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to multiply row three by three, and that's gonna be our new row three. All right, so um, you can do this pretty quickly, but I'm just gonna go through the proper steps. I'm gonna rewrite my row three to the side here in order. Don't bother putting the X, Y, and Z's, just put the numbers. We got three, we got negative four, we got two, and we got one. And I want to multiply it by three. So three times row three. Multiply everything by three here. We got nine, negative 12, six, and three. All we got to do here is plug this in as our new row three. Rows one and two aren't changing. We got to leave everything there, but new replace row three with this. All right, so we take our matrix over here. We didn't do anything to change row one or two. And we put the new row three right in there. We got nine, negative 12, six, and three. And this is our final answer. So that, that is our final, final answer, what we're doing here. We just multiplied row three by three. Now that we've done it, you probably can do it a lot quicker. All right, number two is definitely the most common way to use row operations. It's a combination of multiplying a row by a number and adding rows. All right, so I'll, I'll leave this up here for a second. Our row operation here is saying we want to multiply row two by two and then add to row one. All right, now when you do this, when you Anytime you use some rows over here, they can always, either one can become your replacement. This is telling you you need to replace row one. You do not replace row two. Row two is going to change, stay what it originally is. So this becomes the new row two. Sorry, new row one. All right, so this, once again, the left side, multiply row two by two, then add to row one, and then we are gonna replace our original row one right here with it. All right, so I'm going to do those things over here. I'm gonna do two times row two. Right, we talked about multiplying them, so I'm not going to do the double step here. I'm just going to do two times row two. Two times row two would be negative six, two, zero, and zero. Multiplying everything in row two by two. And then what we want to do that is we want to add to row one. But what you want to make sure you're not doing here is anything else. You just want to rewrite row one because it's telling us to add to row one. So we got six, three, negative one, and two. Right, so once again, we got two times row two. We multiply two, row two by two. Then we're adding to row one. So do the addition. We got negative six plus six, which is zero. Leave zeros in your matrix. Don't get rid of them like before when we had equations. Two plus three is five. Zero plus negative one is negative one. And zero plus two is two. This is your new row one. Meaning we're gonna take our original matrix and all we're gonna do is change row one to this. Okay, so our new row one is zero, five, negative one, and two. 
row two, even though we multiplied row two while we did this, we're not actually changing row two at all. All right, we leave it what it was. And row three, we didn't mess with anyway. Right, but I want to emphasize that point. Even though we did something with row two over here, it wasn't part of what was being replaced. Right, that's definitely the most common error with uh, doing one like this is since you multiply row two by two, you think you have to keep that in your answer and you do not. Right? It's saying only change row one right here. Only change row one. All right, so the last thing we have here is just the notation for interchanging two rows. This is definitely the easiest one to do. What, what all this is saying is switch row two and row three. The double arrow means switch. All right, so we take our matrix over here. Row one isn't being touched, so I'm gonna rewrite that. Switch row three and row two, meaning row two is now what row three was. And row two is now row three. All right, so very literally looks like we're switching them, but that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, so and that is our answer. You'll see on the homework, the way you do these is they have a blank matrix with a whole bunch of spots to fill in and you just fill in so it looks exactly like this. All right, so the last thing I wanna do here that's kind of new before we talk about how your calculator does this stuff because you're going to need to know how to do that is you know actually thinking about how would I do this if I didn't have my calculator. And I can tell you right now, all of these on the homework, it's, it's one step. Most of them are multiple choice, if not all of them. What it's, ask, what it's asking for here is for the following matrix, give the row operation that would put the matrix in reduced row echelon form. There is only one correct answer. Right, so these are intentionally made to be so that there's only one correct answer. What you want to do is really start this by how we analyzed the, uh, the first time we were talking about this. Right, so all six of these problems we went through and figured out why they are or are not in reduced row echelon form. It all boiled down to starting by pointing out the leading ones and then the zero thing and then the zero rows. Right, so we start by circling the leading ones again. But you got one here, here, and here. They are all actually leading ones, so that's not the trick is to, it's not making a leading one. We already have leading ones everywhere. And the thing you want to remember is we want we want zeros above and below. All right, so what you want to notice here is we got zeros pretty much everywhere we need them. These are both good. There's no leading one in column three. We don't have to worry about that. And this is also zero. What we need to do is make this six into a zero. That's the step here that we need to figure out. How do we make this a zero? Because if we, can, if we make this a zero, we'll be good to go as long as we don't change anything else. The important thing about doing these row operations, that's the only way you can actually do this properly. Um, I did mention that you cannot multiply a row by zero, so that is not valid. What you want to do is think about matching these numbers in some way. 
I'll go to back to the example here. If we can multiply one of our rows by a number and then add it to where we want to get a zero, we should be good. Okay. So if you think about making this six into a zero, it, it, multiplying anything in row one won't help us because we'd be multiplying a zero here and we can't, you know, zero times anything is zero, so we're not going to be able to add it and make a zero. But if we multiplied row three by, let's say, six or negative six, then we can add or subtract them and get a zero. So the idea is to multiply row three by negative six. And I'm just doing this in words. Multiply row three by negative six. Doing that would give you a negative six here. Keep in mind that all of these would still be zero. That's why this works. Any any time you don't want to change any of the zeros, but it's not going to. So if we multiply row three by negative six, then we want to add it to row two. All right, well, I'm actually going to do this out. I'm not trying to just explain it abstractly. So symbolically, and I guess the other thing we need to mention is this is going to become our new row two. We're trying to get a zero in row two, so this becomes the new row two. Right. So as far as symbols go, I want to go ahead and write this down. So we multiply row three by negative six, negative six times row three, then we add it to row two and that becomes our new row two. Okay. This is the correct answer. Now when I say there are one, there's one answer, since these are multiple choice, your answer would look like this. Um, it could be row two minus. These can be flip-flopped, of course, because they are just, <coughs> excuse me, they are just uh, addition and subtraction. But it's got to become our new row two. It can't be our new row three because we're trying to get the zero in row two. Now I'm just going to do this out to check our work, make sure everything is good. So we got negative six times row three. We get zero, 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 and negative six. We've got our row two. We're not actually doing anything to it. We're just going to add to this. So row two is zero, one, and negative six, and six. If we add these, zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus negative six is negative six. And negative six plus six is zero. And this is the new row two. All right, once again, I'm just checking the answer. You don't need to do this on the homework, but it's good for, to see that this actually works out. If we plug this into our row two, then we've got our first row is unchanged. Row two is now zero, one, negative six and zero. And the third row is zero, 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 and one. And this one is in our REF. Now you can check the points. The leading ones are going down and right. There are zeros above and below them. There's no zero row. All right, but this is the ultimate answer to our question. All right, now the rest of this section is just me showing you how to do this in a calculator and then also kind of using our calculator to answer a word problem um, that we did before, all right, using it all in the way. All right, so it, uh, I highly recommend that you do watch this if you've never done this on your calculator. I'll also show you one, <coughs> excuse me, 
excuse me, online calculator that can do RREF just as well. And I'll link you to it. Let me actually pull it up beforehand. All right, so what we want to do first here is just under, under really kind of use everything together. If we want to solve a system of equations, and I'm going to let you use your calculator, some problems you will have to do by hand. I didn't just teach you elimination and substitution for no reason. But others, I'm very well fine with you using your calculator to help yourself out. We want to solve the system of equations below by setting up an augmented matrix and using your calculator. All right, so it's right in the directions you're allowed to do this. If there is one solution, give the x, y, z values. If there's no solutions, write D and E. If there's infinitely many, write in terms of the parameters Z. We saw how to do that before. This one's telling you the parameter is Z. Okay. All right, so what we want to do is the first step write the augmented matrix All right, just like it says okay, our augmented matrix our x column is 7 2 negative 2 our y column is negative 8 1 and 2 Our Z column is 10, negative 7, and negative 2. And our last column, our number, col number column is negative 24, 3, and 6. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write this down because uh, just give me a second. When I type in the calculator, I have to click back and forth. If you have it written down, bear with me. Seven, two, negative two. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator first. Uh, TI-83 or 84, you'll see a matrix button here. Um, hit second, matrix. And what you want to do is, yours is probably blank if you've never done matrices in here. Go over to Edit, hit Enter. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is that the matrix that we made is a 3 by 4 matrix. So that is really why we did that at the beginning, is when you do anything in a calculator or a matrix computer, you have to put in the dimensions firsthand. Okay, so we have three rows and four columns. It is a 3 by 4 matrix. All right, what you want to do is just enter things exactly like it is. Um, if you, when you'll see when you hit enter across this, it goes down across the row and then down. All right, so our matrix was 7, negative 8, 10, negative 24, 2, 1, and negative 7, and then 3. And then negative 2, 2, negative 2, and 6. Okay. Once you fill out your matrix, hit second and quit. Go back to the main menu. I'll clear that out. All right, now what you want to do next is go back to the matrix menu. What we're doing is RREF. So if you go under the math, there's a lot of things that can do with a matrix. Go down until you see RREF. Do not do REF because it's not good enough. RREF gives us our simplified solution. And then the matrix, we want to do RREF. Go back to the matrix menu again and the matrix you made it. Um, the matrix A here is the only one that we done so I know it's here if you do have many matrices make sure you keep track of which one you're doing but hit that matrix that's on the main screen under names so it should look something like this close your parentheses 
what it's going to do is spit out the RREF of your matrix. Right, and go ahead and write that down. I'm going to write it down. That way I can put it um, on the board, on the uh, page for us. RREF right there. You should get exactly that if you typed in uh, the calculator correctly, like I did. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down on here. RREF in the calculator. What it did is it did a whole bunch of row operations to make this. We got one, zero, 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 one, zero, negative two, negative three, and zero, and zero, three, and zero. And X, Y, Z, you can keep that vertical bar there if you want, and number. Now, if you read off the equations, which I'm going to just like we did with those previous problems, equation one says x minus 2y equals 0. Equation two, row two, says y minus 3z, but that's not 2y. What am I talking about? Equation one says x minus 2z equals 0. Equation two, y plus negative 3z, so y minus 3z equals 3. And the third one says 0 equals 0. And so as we mentioned before, 0 equals 0 without something that says no solutions means there is infinitely many. If there's infinitely many, we want to write the solutions in terms of the parameter z. So we just solve each of these equations for x and y, we get x equals 2z, add the 2z on each side, and this one, add the 3z on each side, we get y equals 3z plus 3. Right. But knowing how to do things in your calculator and read the calculator is good. Right. Now the online calculator I want to show you for those of you that do not have this calculator, I will link it. Um, this is the website I use for matrix stuff because it can do everything. A lot of this stuff probably doesn't make sense right now, and that's fine. But what you're doing when you uh, do RREF is something called Gauss-Jordan elimination. So right here, the top thing. The first thing I do is set the dimension, the number of rows and columns. It is a three by four matrix, so we Fix that if that doesn't say three by four and set the matrix. And now you just type in your augmented matrix in there. What I find the easiest way to do is, you know, just start in the top left. You add seven. If you hit tab, it'll go over. Tab 10, tab negative 24, and so on. Just typing in the same augmented matrix to show you how to do it on here. And hit solve. Right. So this one, it is a little more of a sophisticated um, type of software because when you have certain solutions, you want to see what's everything. You don't have to pay attention to these specific wordings. You know, we didn't talk about something called a pivot. And we did eliminate. But what you want to do is this last thing here is the RREF matrix, which is the same one we had before. 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 3, 3, and a row of zeros. Right. It's, it's labeling the variables as x1, x2, and x3, not x, y, and z. But if it did, it's actually giving you the, uh, the uh, equations that we got below. x equals 2z y equals 3 plus 3z, three right? But you can use this calculator as well. There's also plenty of other ones, but the reason I like this website is we're going to do Kramer's rule. We're going to do inverse matrices. We're going to do determinants um, and matrix multiplication. 
this one you don't you'll see that's pretty straightforward so we won't have to do much with that but everything that you need to do with the matrix is on here All right but I want to stop this video here uh, there is a word problem that you can it's just like last section the main thing I want to mention here I'll have it filled out uh, for the notes but all you do is make your equations like we did in the last section and then use your calculator. Now you'll, if you read it and you saw the last video, you know this is pretty much the same question as before, but we make our equations and then we make our augmented matrix from it and use our calculator. Right, so one thing that I also want to mention at the end of this video, I know this went on for quite a while. There's a lot of little things in this section. You know, I, I genuinely, I am most interested in your ability to make sure you can switch to an augmented matrix from a system of equations. So you literally just doing the first thing we did is very important. And I want to make sure you can tell me when a matrix is in reduced row echelon form, why it is, why it is not. I want to make sure you can read off the matrix and then while important you know this if you kind of think about the steps of studying this section the reason I did this last wasn't because maybe it's the least important as far as actually doing problems I just view this as you can get away with not knowing much about the row operations and still do the problems you cannot get away with this section not knowing how to read off an augmented matrix and a reduced row echelon form matrix.